Hello everybody and welcome back to the uh, box office. So I think we're going to title this video, Meet the Assembly Team. So right now, we've got three of us working on assembling sundial puzzles. This one is finished, number 66. That's gonna go out to a customer tomorrow. So, everybody meet John. Hello. Jonathan is the main guy for assembling, has been the main guy for the last couple of months assembling uh, the basic sundial. So what do you think working here, John? What are your thoughts? I think it's pretty nice and I was actually able to learn a lot more things than I have been. So cool. I enjoy that. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, it's a much more relaxed environment working here. Yeah, it's pretty relaxed. Yeah. I don't know if I'd say relaxed, but not like, too relaxed. We're we're a little bit picky, but like so right now what are you doing? I'm uh, just putting together these. Exactly what to call them, but yeah. So this is gonna go over top of what we call the glyph disc right here. So this part right in there is what he's working on. So what do you have to do in order to get to this stage? Basically what you have to do is you sand these down, uh, make sure you get rid of like the burrs on the end mm -hmm. on the edges here. Um just use a sander, lightly sand, get it to be a nice worn look. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take some glue, line the outer edge here, mm -hmm. and then get some in the middle. Place that on there. Take some wax, get rid of the uh, excess. And then I'll clamp them down like this and probably wait about, uh, I'd say about an hour and glued up and ready to go. Cool. So it takes about an hour for that to glue up and then we're ready to do it, to glue it up in the next assembly here. So what makes a good part of this and what makes a bad part? When do we have to scrap it? Um, usually when these pop off, we have to scrap them. Yeah. Or sometimes it'll, you know, when you put too much pressure on it, it'll uh, split right down the middle there. Mm -hmm. And also with the black parts here, Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the outer edge right here can uh, pop off. Yeah. So that will a lot of detail there. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I would say is that if you put too much glue on here, it'll squeeze out onto the side and it will it'll glue it down, but then you'll see like the excess glue just oozing out and we don't want that. So. Jonathan put your sorry, John puts on the right amount of glue and then he also if there's anything left over he'll go off over it with a wax brush, right? Yeah. And then just clean that off. Cool. What are you up to, Everett? Uh, right now I'm trying to fit this this would be the top of the box. So just trying to get these pieces to fit and then I gotta fix that piece real quick. Um but basically this is gonna go over top and so I just gotta glue it in. I was just making sure that all the uh, pieces were gonna fit because sometimes when we laser them, uh, it goes a little bit over so then it doesn't quite fit in here. But I think I'm pretty happy with where it is now. So uh -huh. now it's just a matter of gluing it in. 
So, yeah. yeah. So Everett's been back for five days. I mean, you were here like a month and a half ago, so he's been kind of in the loop on stuff, but then also just getting up to speed. So we're getting, we're getting things built uh, a little bit quicker and we there's a few there's always going to be a few hiccups when you know you're learning something new so some of these boxes we had to rework but it's going all in all like it's going great i don't know what you're talking about i don't make any mistakes on any of the new boxes okay so one person we also haven't met is uh kevin my brother kevin and he's the person behind making the shipping boxes how long does it take you to make a couple of shipping boxes. A couple of shipping boxes usually take like, once everything is cut, it's like 30 minutes because there's like one thing alone takes like 20 minutes mm. in the laser. Right. And then once you cut all the other stuff, it gets to be about 30 minutes to make a single box. Why does it take so long? Uh, the foam is like two inches thick, so it has to, the laser has to go really slow. Okay. When it's going that slow, it takes like even 20 minutes just to cut one piece for one box. Wow. You have to do that for every box. Like you see, if the laser cuts the foam to the contour of uh -huh. the box, um, and it has a certificate of authenticity, yep. it's yep. a slot right there. Um, so it cuts the contour of the box. And you can see if you pull this up, that's how thick it is. And there's mm -hmm. two of these in there. So it takes like 20 minutes just to cut these two. And plus, you also got to cut this top piece, this egg foam here. We cut that, fit the contour of the box so it fits all nice and snug. Cool. Yep. And then we also cut the sundial that uh -huh. says Jesse Bourne. That's where the shipping label is going to go right there. Okay. Uh, this, this part alone takes only like five minutes. That's all it takes. Well, that's pretty quick then. That's yeah. what you're doing right now. You're about to laser at that. Now it's not laser at the map, but this is the part that takes the longest because it's you, very thick. Do you ever change the program here in light burn? Every once in a while you I tweak the settings to make sure everything is still, you know, running smooth. So you're almost done with school. How long before school is done? Four or five weeks. Wow, okay. So anyway, do you have any jokes? No, I did give me, I'll, gotta, I'll, I'll bring it in later. He's got to work it in. These cost 50 bucks. These, uh, you know, drawer, I don't know what you call it, drawer cabinets or drawer apothecaries. But they hold all the parts, well, just about all the parts we assembly, the little parts that we don't make ourselves. Well, some of these we make ourselves. But um, we've got two of them. And so now, these guys can work independently and I I almost need one over here but I just do like the final kind of uh, you know the final glue up and so I don't use a ton of those parts so I think I can squeak by without getting one for myself um, but those have been nice and these mats are relatively nice right the yeah. solder mats today or last night John printed up another one of these which is uh, when we're going through, it's very handy to have something like this to set the sundial on and you can work on it and you can rotate it to a different side. And so that's 3D printed. And uh, little things like that help. If there was going to be somebody new who wanted to come work here, what's something that they should keep in mind when working here? Um, definitely take your time. Mm -hmm. uh, don't rush anything because you're going to have to fix it afterwards. Right. And also one good question to ask Jesse is uh, if you can get an air conditioner for us. Uh, there's an air conditioner right over here. This place has got to be like 60 degrees today. But anyways, but I like what he said about taking <laughs> close to 60. So take your time. You don't want to rework stuff because it's no, it's not saving yourself any time by get something pushed on to the next person. Like it's going to come back to you probably if you don't spend that extra minute per box or whatever you need to get stuff to be really nice. Okay, Everett, what's your tip for somebody who wants to work here? Uh, 
I would say it's ask questions and ask them frequently because most, I find that most of the time it's better to ask a question or even a dumb question and make sure that you're doing something right instead of just mm. assuming that you kind of know what's going on. Because right. uh, a lot of times you can get into habits or in some, but sometimes it's not always the right habit. So sometimes it's good just to ask simple questions or double check with someone yeah um, and just make sure you're doing it right because again you don't want to make mistakes and then you spend the rest of your day trying to fix them so right these are pretty complex and there's a million different ways to to do the box slightly different like how much you sand here or how do you how do you fix you know this issue and so having us all make boxes exactly the same and be on the same page is pretty critical Another thing that I've really enjoyed is that I can teach Everett how to do something or I can teach John how to do something. And if one of them is doing the other person's job because of where they are at their box, they can ask each other and then they can teach each other how to do different steps or how to do something better. And um, that way, like when you teach something, you got to understand the the why behind it and so it helps you understand why you even do certain things on a box and what's necessary to do and what's not necessary and it's it's almost more like accountability like okay well if i'm going to tell this person how i want them to make something i better do that myself um and i think that just really helps us i think <laughs> So I'm happy that everybody's able to learn from every, from other people and ask questions and not be a no doubt. So, so uh, did you hear about the kidnapping at school? No, I did not. Oh well, he's fine. He woke up. Okay, that was <laughs> that was okay. That was alright. Right. You, I would definitely you sat in conversation. Like if I if it came up. Why do elevator jokes work so well? I know why. Why? Because they're funny on multiple levels. Fair enough. What do you think? Which yeah, one was better? It's a, class. it's a classic. It's a classic. Well, anyways, I think that wraps it up for this video. Hopefully, you guys liked seeing some of the assembly process for the sundial puzzles. And uh, we just finished box number 66 today. So we're getting these puzzles shipped out soon. We're, we're getting them shipped out quickly. So uh, stay tuned for your sundial puzzle. It's going to be coming out soon. Let us know what you guys want to see more of. And uh, we'll catch you later. Goodbye.